up sauce gang and welcome back to the channel hot sauce beats here with another odd ones out reaction that is right our boy james is back with a brand new video called my thoughts on bluey now looking at the thumbnail and the title of this i'm not 100 sure what bluey is i'm guessing it's, a, it's some kind of cartoon that i've never heard anything about but this guy's about to get his learn on i'm beyond ready because anything that odd ones out does is absolutely amazing i'm beyond hype for this but before we jump into this, won't you show James some love by subscribing to his channel? And if you'd like to watch something spooky this weekend, make sure you check out my first time ghost hunting ever. It's absolutely insane. The video link is pinned in the top of the description and you about to be scared. But enough talking, let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot sauce beats. Woo -hoo! Oh, sauce gang. What up, James? Uncle James, can, can we play Space Explorer? Shut up for a second. I'm watching this. <laughs> Shut up! A naturally charming preschool show. <laughs> Why are you watching a show Zip. for babies? Zip it. Oh, okay, Shut your mouth. Kid. This show is extremely sophisticated and can be enjoyed by both children and adults. So why don't you shut your... Is that is that Bluey right there? Maybe I've seen Bluey? It's just all over the house. Ignorant mouth and find someone who actually loves you to play your silly little space game. <laughs> James, that was kind of harsh, bro. Bingo, you can't say that to your sister. You have to say nice things. Treat others how you want to be treated, mate. Oh, mate. Oh, I really need to. Are we do Australian, Gubna? This episode of The Odd Ones Out is Are called. Are we Australian, Gubna? Uh. Are you familiar with the Australian animated preschool show? That's why it's Australian, Gubna, because it's from Australia. Oh, Bluey. If your TikTok algorithm uh -uh. is anything like mine, you'll have seen a bunch I'm not of, on TikTok of this blue much. cartoon dog all over your For You page, paired with Subway Surfer highlights. Wow, TikTok, clips of a foreign preschool show? I thought you were supposed to cater to my interests. Let's read some of the comments on these bluey TikToks, shall we? No shame, I'm a senior. Hey, have you guys school, watched but I Bluey? Watched Bluey religiously, and this episode made had me all in my feels. I'd say I had a good all childhood, the but I binge Bluey because adult life is so stressful and I'm sad, and it reminds me of a simpler time. Bluey is for Aww. everyone. I'm literally 27, and it's such a comfort show. Bluey is absolutely destroying me as a teenager who wishes he had this childhood. In my teen years, and watching full episodes of Bluey. Watching Bluey High is such a fun time, dude. Have I been living under a rock, chat? <laughs> is James like showing me something that I don't know here? Chat, do you guys watch Bluey? I feel like I've been living under a rock, apparently. I don't know. Huh. huh. You know, to me, I'm just thinking out loud here, it seems like a lot of these comments weren't made by preschoolers. What's going on here? What's now, going if your on? your brain is anything like mine, you'll be thinking, why is this show about Australian dogs so popular with adults who don't even have children? In fact, why does Bluey have over 5 billion views on TikTok? Is 5 billion views? Jeez, bro. Searched more than Paw Patrol, Peppa Pig, and Coco Melon. And why what? is this episode number 8 in IMDb? Shut up. Number eight all-time episode? His highest rated episodes of all time. Above Breaking Bad? This phenomenon intrigued me. And I was also bullied by a large number of people on my own team to watch the show. So one day I sat down, put on the first episode, and... Sheesh. Oh my God. Sorry, chat. I ah. watched all 141 ah. episodes. <laughs> oh, seven on, steer James. ears. 141, but there's only 129 on Disney Plus. Don't worry, my fellow. Silly rabbit Bluey tricks fan. are for kids. We're gonna talk about that later. I work in cartoons, and I've been to furry conventions, so Bluey has always been on my radar of shows I'm aware of. And just from the clips that I saw, I adored the art style, especially the backgrounds. So much so that my very own background team has studied and taken inspiration from Bluey's backgrounds. Here you can see my backgrounds taking on a more Bluey aesthetic. I mean, just look at the colors, especially their Beautiful. greens. Oh my God. Beautiful. Doesn't just Those looking greens at these backgrounds just pop bring a out. smile so to your good. face? While so I was good. watching the first season, I realized, oh, okay. I see why this show is so popular. Why? Because it's Tell genuinely me. a good show. 
We've already established that the show is great to look at, but the voice acting, the sound design, and the music are equally as amazing, so it's also great to listen to. While most, if not all, other preschool shows will hire adults who can sound like toddlers, Bluey gets actual children to voice the actual child characters. Somehow, every Australian toddler in Bluey can be so expressive and emotional, wow. it's impressive that the show got such a talented cast of child actors who don't sound annoying to listen to. Or maybe it's just their Aussie accents that I like, I don't know. <laughs> right. The characters right, have governor. so much personality, and the comedic timing is something I've never seen before in a preschool show. I can't think of a single time Coco Melon has made me laugh this much. Now riddle me this. If all the people that are watching it are teenagers, is it really a kindergarten show? <laughs> or, or preschool? smile. The four main characters are Chili and Bandit, the parents, and Bluey and Bingo, the six and four year old daughters. Yes, Bluey is a girl. You gotta catch up, dude. Come on, it's 2023. The show also does not hide the fact that it's Australian. It references multiple Australian locations and animals. They call flip-flops thongs, and they say things like, Oh, no! Thongs? Do I... Chat, do I have any Australian people in here? Do you guys call flip-flops thongs? Foot thongs? I think... I don't think it should be called thongs. I think you should adopt it into foot thongs. I think it sounds better and it makes more sense. Foot thongs. While some preschool thongs. shows focus on feet teaching thongs. kids numbers and letters, Bluey focuses on the relationship of the family and teaches its lessons through the make pretend games that the family plays. And I wanna emphasize how perfect these two parents are. These two are the most patient and emotionally aware parents I've seen Ever. Because they're fake. There are multiple times <laughs> where the parents apologize to their kids for, frankly, not even doing anything wrong. The dad is like the most perfect dad role model, okay? Check this out. Bingo was sad that dad didn't get to see the leaf bug outside. She was like, Daddy, come and see. Come here, Daddy. Quickly. But he was Quickly. too busy playing with Bluey, you know, being a present father figure in her life. And at night she's all boo-hoo about it, and he kneels down, Suck it up. to her level, and apologizes, explaining that he didn't hear her. Now, I don't have any kids, but if I spent my weekend running around with toddlers, and then right before bed one of them said, <laughs> you didn't get to see the ladybug, I would say, that's okay. I've already seen a ladybug. Good night. <laughs> In one episode, Chicken Rat, Bingo <laughs> lost her favorite toy, and Mom asks, well, where was the last place you had it? The two retrace Bingo's steps, and through flashbacks, we see this bizarre day that Bluey and Bingo had. The very first flashback we see, Bluey and Bingo are cooking a chicken rat egg while wearing weird costumes. And through this creative backwards storytelling, we piece together what a chicken rat is and how the kids ended up in this situation. That's pretty clever. It's episodes like that which really make me appreciate the care that went into this show and really sets Bluey apart from every other preschool show. Oh, you got it. You got it on on S tier. On S tier. Bruh, is Paw Patrol that bad? You know what, chat? I, I don't even want to say this. I don't even want to say this. I hate Sesame Street, and I hate Barney. Oh, I've never heard of Kipper. Arthur, I never got into Arthur. I mean, Arthur's been around for a hot minute, but it was just something that was, like, always there. You know, if I, like, when I was a kid, if I wanted to throw something on the TV and not watch it and pay, not pay attention, I'd throw in Ar Arthur. You know, everyone loves Dora. Thomas and Friends, just creepy. Ka Kalu? Kalu? I don't think I've ever heard of or watched. Maybe? I don't know. The, I don't know the name, but the face looks familiar, so I don't know. But apparently it sucks, like Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol! Paw Patrol! Most preschool shows stick to a formula and talk down to the viewer. Because typically their viewers are short. Teletubbies suck! I hate Teletubbies, they're evil, they're Satan. As a childless adult, I don't wanna say, this show teaches you how to be a good parent because I don't know how to be a good parent. But on paper, there are lessons in this show that are Tell just as James. important for the Tell parents Tell us, James. To learn. So while watching season one, I got a feel for the world and characters. I started to piece together, 
Okay, this show is depicting perfect parents, it's well written and wholesome, anyone regardless of having kids can enjoy the show. Let's watch the rest, shall we? Jesus, bro. Season two and season three is when things go from a hundred wow. to a thousand. This is when episodes cover deep and emotional topics that I think toddlers are too baby to understand. And Let's it's see, made there's for... the struggles of keeping romance in your relationship alive when you have two toddlers to look after, why taking time to play with your kids can have a ripple effect that lasts into adulthood, feeling inadequate as a mom, what it's like having a dad in the army, parents disagreeing on different parenting styles, moms getting tipsy implied, dealing with infertility, abandonment, potentially a miscarriage, that one's still up in the air, and death. Actually, that one was in season one. You can't even compare Bluey to other preschool shows. Like, what the f*** was Dora the Explorer even doing? Was she even trying to entertain the adults who are also going to be watching her show? <laughs> Dora had the same formula every episode, and there was a map who sang a song that was just repeating the same three words 14 times. Season Maybe two, 15. there's an episode where Chili <laughs> is telling Bluey about how when she was a baby, she wasn't crawling or rolling over as fast as the other babies in her mom group. And she compared Bluey's developmental delay to the other babies and felt inadequate as a mother. And then this pink poodle comes to console her, looks directly into the camera and says, you're doing great. I'm a he him male with no kids and I still get teary eyed just thinking about that episode. Seems People pretty will complex. Tell you that Bluey is a kid show that adults can enjoy too. No, that episode wasn't for the kids. It was directed at all the moms watching who are doubting their motherhood. When has Coco Melon ever done something like this? That's true. I've never really thought about that in regards to kids shows. Right. I mean, they're they're made for kids, preschool show or whatever. You know, they're made for little kids. But there is the other aspect of that that the parents are watching the show with the kids. So why not include? That's why I've always been a fan of Pixar and DreamWorks. Some of my favorite movies of all time, Shrek, Toy Story, Toy Story 2. I mean, let's be real here. But stuff like that, right? Because it's, it's definitely, right? It's animated. It's a show for kids. But there is so much adult humor. And you can even argue, really, shows like Shrek, are made for adults but i think a lot of shows should you know I, I don't know if bluey's like paving the way for a new wave of kid shows but this just seems brilliant and like it should have been this way the whole time all the babies stop singing mid nursery rhyme look directly into the camera and say hey mom just wanted to say you're doing a great job raising me keep up the good work like, no, hey. that'll never happen. I'm still not done talking about how impressive the writing in Bluey is, okay? So please indulge me for a bit. Tell I'm me, switching James. into video essay mode as we do a deep dive into the themes and symbolisms of one of my favorite Bluey episodes, Flatpak. Ooh, like a little montage? The montage. entire episode is an allegory of human history from a religious and scientific perspective, respectively. And it touches on the ever-growing relationships between a mother and child, all within seven minutes. Wow. No, I'm not reading too deep into this. Let's begin. Bandit and Shilly set out to build a new swing for their porch. And we get this great meta self-aware joke from Bandit when he complains about the instructions saying, I'm not, not taking, taking advice, advice from, from a cartoon, cartoon dog. dog. Meanwhile, the girls play games with the leftover packing materials that are thrown into the yard by their parents. Bluey and Bingo Shows you can are have fun with rat, anything. which they pretend is water, so they pretend they're fish. Then they're given cardboard, which they pretend is land, so they pretend they're frogs. Then they're given tails and become lizards, then T-Rexes, then birds, then furry little animals. Is this chart starting to look familiar? Then they're monkeys and then bipedal cave dogs. What? <laughs> is that you, Mr. Darwin? <laughs> Were these girls playing out the evolution of man through a silly game? Now, if you didn't like the evolution symbolism, I know you're going to love the parents being an allegory for the creators. You know, the, the, the big guy upstairs, the, the whatever you believe is going on. The parents supply the girls with their entire world. They give the girls the sea, the land, the volcanoes, and the trees. In these cave paintings the girls make that tell their history, they depict the parents as gods, higher up and in the clouds. They do look a little angry. Perhaps <laughs> they look very the angry. Testament. The parents <laughs> being the creators <laughs> is hinted at again by Chili when she looks at the girls lovingly saying, Aw, we, we made, made them. them. 
The parents give the girls an Allen wrench, aka tools, and one industrial revolution later, the girls evolve from cave dogs to modern dogs, building futuristic towns and spaceships. Throughout the episode, wow. as the girls go through different stages of evolution, they also go through different stages of their lives as a mother and child. As fish, Bluey says that she's the mommy fish and Bingo is the baby. Then as frogs, Bingo pretends to be a toddler and Bluey Bro, teaches I'm her how to catch by the show. Then as T-Rexes, Bingo becomes a big girl. Then as cave dogs, she's a teenager. And finally, in the last stage, she's all grown up, ready to traverse the universe on her own. She thanks Bluey for looking after I her can. and leaves on her spaceship. Be what Bluey, I want to be. now much older, as shown by her having to use a cane, Aww. crosses the styrofoam threshold, which represents her death, and she gets to live with... I'm just thinking that's a big mess they're going to have to clean up when they're done. ...her creators. <laughs> All while this orchestral masterpiece is playing, and suddenly you realize you're crying? When did that start? I'm not and crying, you're crying! the allegory all Stop together it. at the very end, saying, Ah... This is heaven. Are you joshing me right now? This preschool show was able to tell- Who says that? Do I ever heard that? And James is kind of showing the his age a little bit there, dude. I haven't heard that in years, bro. Are you joshing me right now? And who came up with that? Was his name Josh and he wanted to make his, his name like a, a thing? Are you joshing me right now? Tell a clever allegorical forever, story with tasteful religious undertones in how many minutes? Did you just make me feel emotions over a cartoon dog? This isn't the only episode you can make an in-depth video essay on. There are it's not even the one that's ranked number that eight overall. as hard as this one. While I was doing research for this video, it got me thinking about another foreign animated kids show with eight minute long episodes that focus on a family of two toddlers. Except unlike Bluey, this show is universally hated. Caillou, it's Caillou. Oh, I had this idea like in my head that people only hated Caillou because he was a more accurate portrayal of a toddler. But in the handful of Caillou episodes I watched, I was reminded, oh no, that's why people hate Caillou. Because he sucks. His brattiness isn't even important to the plot. It comes out of nowhere. Caillou will be getting ready in the morning. He spills cat food and says, Gilbert, Gilbert look, look what, what you, you did. did. He's at the beach and this bird who's done nothing wrong gets told to go away. And there's a bunch more examples of Kai. Wasn't that bird just chasing him though? <laughs> Caillou being a whiny piece of shit. People and I don't like whiny brattiness stuff Caillou's though. I agree. Screeching, piercing, whiny voice does not help him be a likable character. Uh -uh. I bet real toddlers can be little punk sometimes, but why would you show that in your cartoon and not have him learn any lesson? There's never a lesson learned in Caillou. Since Caillou was a brat all the time, a lot of people, myself included, wondered why Caillou's parents never disciplined or even tried to change his bratty behavior. But after I thought about it, I realized it would be a very weird episode of Caillou if one day Caillou's mom was like, Caillou? You're grounded. What did you do to your sister? I made her look pretty, Mommy. Caillou, that was Mommy's expensive <laughs> makeup. How many times do I have to tell you not to touch Mommy's things? Come here, you little twit. Ah! Ah, mommy, Give me why are you hitting getting a spanking? Ah! Ah! Mommy, you're hurting me. I've had enough of you, Caillou. Ah! Are we watching Haminations right now, bro? <laughs> this just came out of left field. Oh, yeah, you. That kid got what was coming to him. I don't know. Maybe that episode would be cathartic to some parents. Anyways, getting back to the actual best children's show ever. Even though Bluey is literally the most mentally intelligent and educational show for the minds of children, teens, adults, That's and good. parents. That's how kids some learn. Some unnamed mouse company decided to censor some of the episodes on their platform. It's the strangest things that got censored too. This horse pooping, Bandit getting hit in the groin, Bandit saying the word groin. groin. This hitchhiker is no longer from Argentina. That one's kind of weird. This pretend cat saying it will pretend pee on the curtains. Bandit hinting at wanting to get Snip, snip down there. Adults, you know what I'm talking about. And the last 10 episodes of season three, which are some of the deepest episodes in the series, aren't even on Disney Plus, but that could just be a licensing thing. You like how he put D-S-I-N-E-Y? I don't know. I kept waiting for the infertility episode. I heard so much about it. I finally got to the last episode on Disney Plus and thought, oh, okay. They're saving the deepest one for last. All wah, right, let's wah, do wah. this. And the episode was about the family playing courtroom to determine if Bandit farted. 
I hope this video convinced <laughs> you to give Bluey a chance. Yeah, dude, this looks I mean, like a you're great still show. Here listening to a grown man talk about it, so you got to be at least a little interested in it. Through its relatable and realistic portrayal of family life, the show has not only entertained, but also taught valuable life lessons to its viewers. The show's emphasis on play and family bonding is so refreshing to see compared to the usual fast-paced, mind-numbing shows aimed at kids. Bluey reminds us all the importance of spending time with loved ones Aww. and finding joy in the everyday. And if you still don't want to watch Bluey, have you thought about getting high and watching it? Thank you all so much for watching this episode of James getting obsessed over something he probably shouldn't be. Did you have a favorite part about this episode? You don't think it's yeah, interesting? Yeah, that was my favorite part, too. You should get high uh, and watch it. Then it'll be really uh, interesting. Just make sure you got some snacks. It's on my website right now, so if you enjoyed the show, sure be sure snacks, to head over and reserve your copy today. <laughs> and something to drink. full of new stories and mouth. illustrations and will be released on September 6th, and I'm super excited to hear what you all think of it. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Big shout out to my amazing team. They really crushed it this video, and you better be wearing your seatbelts. Let's go, murder drones! Let me bring you in, fam. What? Okay, bro. This is, this was very unexpected. Uh, hey, this is very unlike anything James has done. I mean, it was basically an, an advertisement for Bluey, which is awesome. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I think. Well, first off, I'm gonna ask my kids if they've ever watched Bluey, I, and they're huge on TikTok, so they probably, A, they probably already watch Bluey, and B, I know they've seen a million Bluey, you know, TikTok, so. But what I think, I'm gonna, I'm inspired by this, dude. A, I, I've, I've always been a massive fan of animations, uh, of any sort, whether it's a show, a movie. Um, and I I pride myself at being a good father. You know, I have uh, custody of my kids, so I have them 95% of the time. So I'm gonna ask them, hey, do you guys wanna watch Bluey together? I, I'm interested to see what the show is. Um, and it sounds like it's very educational. I love anything that, you know, isn't necessarily targeted at kids, but still uses big words and it's educational and makes them smarter and has adult concepts. Um, I'm a big believer, just like he said, not talking down to kids, but educating them and bringing them up and leveling them up. You know, don't goo 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 ga ga ga. No, dude, I'm gonna treat you like an, an adult. Still treat them like kids, but educate them as an adult, you know, like lift them up. So yeah, I think I'm gonna watch a couple episodes of Blue with my kids and we'll see how this goes, but Never heard of Bluey before this, and I'm super inspired, and thank you, James. So, I had an absolute blast watching this. I Let me know what you guys think. Do you watch Bluey? Have you, I don't even think I can ask, have you ever heard of Bluey? Because it sounds like it's huge, and I've just been living on a rock. But let me know what you guys think. Show James some love by subscribing to his channel. Don't forget to watch my first time ghost hunt video ever. It's super spoopy, and uh, we're filming episode two this weekend. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and remember, it's easy sleeping, big beats, and as usual, be kind of one another. That's all I got. Boom, I'm out. Come on, gonna be love for the sauce gang. Be sauce gang.